Alright, so welcome back to the mobile game tutorial. So last episode we created a, um, a jump mechanic, not a jump, I mean a boost mechanic. So this big button over here, that's what we did. Basically now we got this jump pad and uh, we can almost make it there. Okay, I have to modify that once more. Put the boost speed on 10 like I did last time. Okay, so um, we've got this mechanic now. That's something that I forgot to do actually before starting to code game mechanics is we need some way to end the level and also save the data. So that's what we're going to do really quickly in this episode. So let's go ahead and just, uh, let's declare ourselves one object, not, not an object, sorry. Let's create ourselves an object, uh, say a cube. All we're really interested in in that object is the, uh, the collider. So basically just put uh, a cube for now and this is going to be the end zone. So if you watch the um, 2D tutorial, we, we did pretty much the same thing and this was called the wind box. So in this case, this is the box that is going to uh, tell the level manager that we actually completed the level. Then we're going to turn off the timer, we're going to save the time to the uh, player pref and so on. So let's go ahead and, and create ourselves a prefab out of that. So I'm going to call this wind box. Now every level is going to need a wind box somewhere. So I will be taking this and I will be drag and dropping it right inside the prefab folder. And here we go, now we have a wind box. All right, now that wind box also needs something else. It's, it needs a uh, some kind of victory script. So that's what we're gonna do down here in the add component. Let's go ahead and add. So let's go ahead and wind box and open it up inside of mono develop. It's fairly simple code actually. So all we have to do is called the untrigger enter function. So this is a callback from Unity. Make sure you do no mistake in the uh, spelling of this function. It is a private void on trigger enter, which takes in parameter a collider that we are going to call call. And now to make sure that um, no, it's not another object that enters the box. It's actually the player. We're gonna say if call dot tag is equal equal to then we open up the string and we type in a player with a capital P. So like I said, this is only to make sure that whatever enters this trigger, whatever enters the collision with the box, uh, it's the player. So we got to make sure that it's the player. To do that, we're going to check is your tag player. Now let's go back on the player and make sure it actually has the player tag. So go ahead and select it down here. It is the player prefab. Now up here, as you can see, the tag is untagged. So we're going to change that for player. And now it should have changed everywhere. So um, this player now has the player tag and the other player in the other scene also has the player tag. All right, so now we pretty much know that um, the player has entered the win box. So we gotta trigger the victory function. But now this victory function does not exist just yet and we can't really be putting it inside of the win box because we'll need some data that the level manager holds basically. So. For now, we're simply going to put this in comment. We're going to say victory. Now let's go back on our level manager. So on this script, we are going to create a static instance of it. So up here, let's type in private static level manager. And we're going to call this instance with a small i. And just below that, a public static level manager property. So with a capital Y, I mean i. And inside of the brackets, we are going to say get, then open up the curly brace once more, and we're going to return instance like this. Okay, so right now we can access it from everywhere. Let's just make sure that the instance is set though. So inside of our start, we'll say instance is equal to this. And now we'll be able to access it from pretty much anywhere. Okay, so we're going to stay inside of our level manager for now and just declare a public void victory function that takes in no parameter and once that is done, once the function is made, let's go back on our win box, call level manager dot instance dot victory. Just like this. And that's all we need for the win box. Now the rest of the script is going to be done uh, inside of the victory function. So Let's just make sure everything is fine and that victory is called. So to make sure that it is called, 
I'm simply going to write a simple debug.login here and just type in victory. Oh, I really can't type today. Okay, so this is a cube, the Winbox cube. It has a box collider that we have to put on trigger, so that's another step that we must not forget. Go ahead and put this on trigger, and we're also going to hit apply. All right, now let's hit play and actually make it to the end. Whoop, okay, kind of failed here. All right, let's try once more. So I'm going to get some speed, hit my boost button, and there we go. So as you can see down here, it says victory. So it is being called and we can now type in whatever we want in here. So whenever the player finish level, I'd like to call the save function. So I'd like to save some data on, um, on the level he finished. So basically, if he beat the time, if he beat the score, how much coins did he collect, all that kind of good stuff. I need to take care of that here. All right, so let's go ahead and start with something fairly simple. We're gonna go ahead and uh, just keep track of the time. So up here, wherever we declare our, um, our fields, we are going to say private float start time. Now I'm also going to add uh, two other time field and you're gonna see what they are for in a second. So. Let's declare, this time it has to be public, so let's make this public. Um, a public float, silver time, and public float, gold time. Now you probably have an idea of what they're going to be used for, but I'm just going to keep going for now and we will uh, sort this out a little bit later on. So back inside of our victory function, actually never mind, uh, before we go into victory function, let's open up the start and inside of the start we're going to do start time is equal to time dot time. So whenever the level starts, we're gonna keep track, a, a, we're gonna keep a timestamp of that very moment. And whenever we hit the victory, we're gonna say float duration is equal to time dot time minus start time. Now this way we can have the duration of the whole level by using the original timestamp. Right, so we have the duration of the level right now now what I'd like to give next is the currency. I like to increment the currency. So the player finish a level, he should be rewarded with some kind of currency. And the way I'm going to determine how much uh, currency he's getting is by using the silver and also the gold time. So I'm going to go ahead and start saying if duration is smaller than gold time, then we're going to do this. Okay, so if he makes it under the gold time, we're gonna say game manager dot instance dot currency, oh, not camera, currency is plus equal, and then you can give any amount you want. Uh, I'll be giving 50 gold. Now, if he made it under the silver time, let's give it 25. And if you make it in the whatever time, so maybe bronze time, let's only give him 10 gold. Okay, so, now all of that is done, let's go ahead and do game manager dot instance dot save. So it is going to save the currency. But now how exactly are we going to save this duration of ours? Because we, we need to keep track of it somewhere um, in order to know first, did the player ever completed the level? And second, um, you know, whenever he wants to beat his own score, he's gonna need to, to have his own score somewhere. He's gonna need to know what is his previous time. So to do that, what I'll do is I'll actually create a new entry inside of the player pref and every single level is going to have its own entry. So say you have 10 levels and we're gonna have 10 different player pref. Now as for the key that is uh, going inside of the player pref parameter, I'll be using the level name. So it's not going to be complicated at all. We're simply going to put the level name as a key and inside of that, we're going to keep track of, so what was the best duration you've had? Uh, also, what is the silver time and what is the gold time? So let's go ahead and write that. We're going to keep that inside one single string. So we're going to have to declare a string down here that we'll call it, uh, save string. And let's start with uh, nothing. So basically, let's just leave it like that. Now, save string is going to plus equal 
and in here we're going to say duration to string. So right now our string should look something like that. So I just write it in comment. Uh, our string should look something like that. So if you made it in 30 seconds, it should look like this, basically. And now after that, we're going to keep track of the silver time. So save string is plus equal to and now I'm going to use a uh, whichever character you want that we're not going to be using in a string. So I could be putting this here, or the ampersand, or the little star. Actually, I'll put the ampersand. And then close it off, and then I'll do save string plus equal silver time dot to string. And I'll do the exact same thing down here, so plus equal ampersand and save string plus equal go time dot to string. All right, so now our string should look like uh, like this. So uh, this is the first digit, that is the duration. Then after that, there is the silver time. So say we put a minute, that's 60 seconds. And the gold time would be, say you made it in 45 seconds. So this is the string we're actually saving. And we're saving it to the scene name. So let's go ahead and do that right here. Let's do player pref dot set string and as for the key we're going to give the scene manager dot get active scene dot name I believe yep here it is and as for the value we're going to put the save string in here okay so all of this should happen whenever we hit the victory now let's go ahead and in our game oh, what's this use of unassigned Okay, so we got to put somewhere uh, something in here. I'm simply going to put a empty string. All right, back in our game now. If I hit play on this, and um, I actually turn around and complete the level, no reference exception. Why is that? Okay, so Winbox had a null reference on the game manager instance. All right, so for the error, it is because we don't have a game manager in this scene. If you remember, we actually get it inside of the main menu and it carry on to the next scene. So uh, whenever we want to play, we have to boot using this uh, very scene here. So let's go ahead and do that. This is level one, swipe, swipe. And let's actually complete the level. Okay, so no more error, and we pretty much saw nothing because we have no uh, no feedback. But if I go inside of my registry, and I find my game, which is mobile RB, as you can see over here, one underscore training, that's actually the name of my scene. And it contains my string. So over here, this part on the right is my string. So as you can see, this is the time we, we did. So that's eight seconds, and an ampersand zero, and another ampersand zero. We could actually go ahead and set these uh, these silver and gold time. So if I go over here and I choose my level manager, let's say that silver time is 10 seconds and let's say that gold time is say eight. So if I make it under eight seconds, then we get the gold rank. And if I make it under 10, we get the silver rank. And if we don't get in inside of that time range, then uh, we get no rank, but we still complete the level. So let's try to get a, uh, a gold rank. So hitting boost twice and no reference exception because we have to start from here. Uh, this is gonna get a little bit annoying, but we have to do this. All right, so quickly going here. So I'm pretty sure I made it under the gold time. Now, if I go to the shop, I should have more currency, so 60. Now, if you remember, if we win with the gold time, we actually get uh, 50 currency. So let's let's do that once more, just to make sure. So I went through the victory box. Let's play again to shop. I'm now at 110, and we can just keep going until I have uh, enough money to buy some skin. All right, so let's just do one more thing before we end this video, and uh, it's not going to be a permanent change, but. Uh, we still have to do it. So if we go down here, right after where we save, let's do a scene manager. Oh, I'll zoom in a bit. 
dot load scene and let's load the menu once more so what's the name of my menu again it's main menu so we can just get uh, the, the game flow back you know we can get the game flow going once more but a little bit later on I'd like to add some time in between uh, whenever the player hits the, the victory box and the time we actually switch scene maybe even put a input in front of that so another menu that would pop that would say congratulations you've won this was your time here is your currency increase and all that kind of good stuff so that's going to be pretty mi oh. I'm not quite good yet so that's going to be pretty much it for this episode guys uh, thanks for watching if you enjoyed or if you learned something please go ahead and leave a like I really appreciate that and also, if you have any question or comment, please leave them in the comment section below. I'll try to answer as soon as possible. Other than that, um, subscribe for more tutorials like these, and I'll be seeing you guys in the next episode.